Hello everyone, welcome back to our Porsche Restoration Project. This morning we're getting ready to lay down our base color and clear coat on some of the smaller pieces of this car. Uh, also, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, some of the products I'm using and uh, talk about orange peel and how to deal with that and what's really going on there. Uh, let's take a look at our base color here. This is our uh, Deltron 2000 series, a real good base color. Uh, not using an activator with this, I'm just using it straight up one to one with the reducer and what I'm doing is I'm taking this gallon and I'm mixing it in a one pail, a 10 quart, which is a two and a half gallons. And then once I have a good mix out of that, um, then I'm going to pour it into a two gallon container, which I can draw from and then return to when I'm uh, done with my cup. And also we're going to use a clear coat, this is a Deltron uh, PPG product uh, 2021. This is a real good clear, real high quality clear. And this is going to be the catalyst we're going to be using here. And this is a very short life on uh, expiration with this guy. So you crack this lid, you want to really have a good strategy on how you're going to use it all up before you have to throw any of that away if you have to. Um, you know, basically, three-hour pout life, so you don't have much working time with it. And a total of 14 days once you crack that seal. So uh, part of getting through some of the difficulties in painting, if you uh, are new at this or trying it out for the first time um, is having a good strategy. How are you going to get through all these parts and, uh, and deal with all the problems and issues that come up uh, as you go along. So uh, one of the things I like to do is put together a good painting strategy. That has to do with timing, when I'm going to do it, what parts I'm going to paint first. Um, do I do the back side first? Do I do the front side first? And just basically map out your whole project uh, break out a calendar and go over the whole thing. You even want to work in to your strategy uh, when you're breaking these seals on these on these mixes that uh, you can use this up properly. Uh, some of this stuff can be quite expensive. This uh, clear coat and uh, catalyst here is about $250 for that clear. About $150 for this one quart of mix. So um, timing is really important on getting through all this and then also having your spec sheets handy. So uh, good strategy is always a good idea. Uh, another thing you want to think about is um, when you're in the paint booth, what matters, what doesn't matter. Um, pretty much when putting down final paint, everything matters. Uh, temperature matters, timing between recoats matters, bounce back from your spray gun matters, overspray matters. Uh, what you're wearing matters. Uh, it's just an uh, infinite list of things that can uh, end up affecting your final paint job. Sounds like a lot to think about, but if you've done it a couple times, then uh, it's really not too much to, to worry about. So one of the things I like to do is take a look at some, uh, some of the things that I wear in here. Okay, so this is, a, uh, this is a rash guard. What is a rash guard doing in a paint booth? This is something I wear uh, made by Quicksilver. That's something like this. Uh, a workout uh, tight fitting compression clothes or something like this. This is nylon and the reason I wear something like this, this is tight fitting and this will allow me to reach over the car when I'm doing the roof of the car. We're quite high off the ground right now and when I get ready to spray this thing I'm going to be up on a ladder. I'm going to lean way over this roof and any part of my clothing touches this. Uh, yeah, it's going to be real bad. So you don't want to be touching uh, any of your clothing against any of your wet paint. Uh, another thing you can use, uh, you've got these throwaway Tyvek type suits or uh, painting suits, and these are okay. These are okay, I think, for uh, maybe priming, but when you get into final paint, you really want um, a much higher quality paint suit if you're going to wear one. This one here is uh, made by Sada, and the nice thing about this one. Uh, it's got an elastic band on the back, which keeps your waist nice and tight. And then also a uh, real tight hood around your, your hairline so you don't drop any hairs while you're painting. Uh, and this is washable, so you could put this in a laundry net and just wash it on gentle. You can reuse it. So, you know, something like this throwaway, good quality throwaway, is about $20 a piece. And uh, a nice paint suit is about $40, so it's worth investing in uh, buying a nice paint suit. Uh, I will wear a shirt like this only when I'm doing the shell, just so I don't have an accident and uh, accidentally touch the paint. Okay, so uh, one of the things I want to talk about also is orange peel. What's really going on there? 
and uh, why do we have it? So one of the best ways to think about orange peel is um, if you can imagine you're picking a piece of fruit off of a tree, nice plump piece of fruit, you set it on your countertop uh, and it looks nice for two, three days. And then after a week, it starts shrinking down and shriveling. Um, give it a couple of weeks, it's really looking bad. Now, what's really happening there is uh, this natural uh, physics of play with all this painting is, is basically nature at work. So really it's a combination between evaporation and uh, dehydration of the liquids and solids of what you're, what you're working with. In the case of the fruit, what's happening is you've got a solid mass with a lot of water content and as it's slowly evaporating out of there, it wrinkles down. And that's exactly what's happening with our solvent-based materials on, uh, on our paint project. So what's happening, I want to show you, uh, I can show you and get a close-up here. Okay, here's our, uh, here's our bumpers. And you can see in our earlier videos, this scuffed up really nice. Everything looks super tight. Uh, it doesn't look like there's any orange peel in there at all. It just looks really clean to paint. But actually, there is. There is very small micro bits of orange peel. Got this uh, sanded up a little bit here. Let me see if I can show it to you. Then we're in better lighting. Uh, okay, there you go. All right, you can see, so I scuff sanded it. My scuff sanding doesn't show any orange peel. But if I scratch it up with some 600, you can see, even on the smallest of scales, there is orange peel in there. And that, on this particular coat, is not really going to affect the overall picture too much. Um, but if it's a heavy orange peel, it could affect it. So what I do is I scuff all this, I scuff it all up 100%, make sure it's scuffed, so that you have a mechanical bite when your paint sticks to it. And then um, after that, I like to follow it up with some, uh, with some wet 600. But I'll, however, because this is your sealer coat, you got to tread lightly. you got to go real, real light. You can see here a little bit of orange peel. Um, this is okay and won't have any effect on uh, polishing out your paint in the end and uh, getting a real smooth mirror finish on there. However, on the shell, I've re-blocked this uh, only in the flat areas. And uh, if, if you decide that you can stand a little bit more sanding, you can get through this and just block it one more time, real light, a real light touch, almost like a jeweler's touch here, kind of like polishing a gold watch. Um, if you can do this, um, there's big rewards for you at the end of the paint, because the more right we are here, the better everything else is going to be. So back to our orange peel then, so what do we want to do? We got, uh, we got the manufacturer specifications, all our spec sheets tell us to put it down, a certain ratio, uh, a certain thickness, a, thir a certain mill, so many coats. And if you do that, you're going to have orange peel. Uh, well, the guys that actually manufacture this stuff, uh, not only are they chemists, they're, they're scientists. These guys have evolved these materials over many years, and they know exactly what the correct balance of solids to solvent ratio is to get the best result. So building into your strategy, is you want to keep this in the back of your mind how are we going to deal with all this orange peel and the solids that go with it what's happening in the orange peel is when you put your paint on wet uh, once it starts to evaporate or dehydrate so to speak um, that's what you're seeing in comparison to like our uh, our piece of fruit example it's actually shrinking down and shriveling up and the orange peel is a result of the solids that are left over after the liquids evaporate. And some of this can take a long time, especially with solvent-based materials. So um, in the case of this car, I am not trying to spray this in a manner where I do not have any orange peel because if I over-reduce my products, I can eliminate uh, a lot of this orange peel. I can thin this down. There's a lot of guys out there uh, that'll take, they'll take this clear coat and they will reduce that down. I think right now it, it mixes at four to one to one. Uh, there's guys out there that'll mix this uh, at literally 200% uh, solvent content, which what you're doing if you're over solvent uh, reducing, 
is you're taking away all the solids and all the engineering that's been put into it uh, that actually makes it good. All the UV inhibitors, all the, uh, the materials to make it hard and to give it that shine and that depth. You're basically watering it down uh, to sacrifice uh, the orange peel. So for me, when I paint this car, I'm going to stick with the recommended uh, mixing ratios. I might wet it up a little bit on the last coat just to get it to flow out. But I fully intend to have orange peel on this project when I'm done. And that's part of my strategy. Because after it dries down, I can then go in there. I'll have plenty of solids on the, on the uh, bodywork that I can then uh, polish down to a mirror finish. We have the technology now to polish these cars to an absolute mirror finish. So what we want to do is we want to make sure we got the right amount of material on there to do that. And if we water it all down trying to get away from orange peel, then uh, you're just not going to get the quality really that you want out of it. So it's a little bit of a, a trade-off there. Everything in painting is a trade-off. Do it one way, there's advantages to it, but you usually have to give something up on the other end. So anyhow, uh, I'm getting ready to roll this car out of here, get some paint going. And uh, we'll get going on that and uh, follow up and see what it looks like after she's dried. Okay guys, we got our base coat down. I uh, decided to go with three coats on this, it's spraying up so nice, um, but because I had to do some sanding on the uh, sealer coat, I think it's a good idea just to put one extra layer of mill on there just to fill in the micro lines. Uh, looks like it's drying up nice. Not really seeing anything I have any worry about. Pretty straightforward. I'll let that dry up another, maybe another 30 minutes and then uh, get going with some clear coat. Also, you can see how I've got this staged here. So this is all I'm doing at uh, any one time. But up here by the draft, as it's pulling the air, and on the rear of the booth, I have my next items lined up. They're covered temporarily with plastic so I don't get any overspray on them until I'm ready to work with them. And then what I'm gonna do is, uh, as soon as these are done flashing with the clear coat, I'll bring these up front and uh, bring these to the back, get them staged, prepped, and ready to go. Also, uh, I want to mention that all this stuff here seems you know, crazy, a lot of things going on, but there really is no hard or fast rules for doing any of this. Um, a lot of times you just kind of have to make it up as you go, depending on what's going on. Uh, maybe you intended on putting on two coats, but circumstances are saying you really need three. Um, different colors, different pigments sprayed differently, temperature affects everything, gun pressure, everything. So really just got to look each piece over and take it as it comes and uh, always remain flexible with whatever's going on in the booth. Alright, let's get some clear going and we'll be right back. Okay guys, there she is. So that's three wet coats. Uh, first coat going on just a slightly bit lighter than the second two. But the second two coats, um, just a full wet coat, not overdoing it, just putting the right amount on there so everything is connecting properly, all our dots are connecting. And uh, one of the things you want to think about when you're setting your pieces up to spray is how you're going to get around the piece with your gun. You can get the bottom edges, the outside edges, you have to be able to move your gun through these tight areas without getting a dry spray. Um, if you get a dry spray, a little bit more difficult to deal with than, uh, let's just say, putting a little bit too much material down. Because you can always sand out and polish out a uh, drip or a sag. So in the spray booth, gravity is your friend and your enemy at the same time. In the case of this piece, definitely my friend. It's amazing. And that, that stuff lays down so tight it's almost hard to believe. You know, a little speck of dust in there. All this very normal coming out of a paint, paint job. Um, but yeah, real nice. If I hung this piece, I have all kinds of issues with it. This stuff would be dripping and sagging. Because there's just so much solids in clear coat, and it's the solids that do the sagging, it's not the solvents. It's a very heavy, very heavy product. Kind of like spraying glue. 
too sticky. Okay, I'm going to get these next guys pulled up here, get some paint on there, and I'll take a look at them. Okay guys, that's it for today. I'm going to uh, stop right here, and then tomorrow I'm going to set up the front fenders, just do those for one shoot, and then uh, the following day we're going to do the shell. This is drying up real nice. Seems like uh, rounded surfaces take the paint a little bit better than the flat surfaces. Something about stretching over. It uh, tightens them up real nice. A little piece has turned out real good. Nothing going on there I have to worry about. Gas tank lid. The backside first on this one. And then our other pieces, they seem to dry up pretty nice. And uh, if we get a little overspray on these now, it won't really matter because they've set up. And uh, we're going to go and sand these out anyways down the road. Okay, so let's call that part one of our uh, painting series. And then um, uh, next up will be the shell and the front fenders. Well, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you on the next video.